ครับคุณค่ะ Hi coming to you today from Amazon coffee shop and that's the coffee shop right there and this is the petrol station and the seating areas As you can see, it's not a very nice day today. And in my hurry to get out of, out of the house, this morning, during a lull in the rain, I forgot my tripod. So yeah, I'm holding the camera today, I'm resting on the back of a chair. So today I wanted to, to continue episode two of the Living in Paradise series. We're digging a bit deeper today into the cultural aspects of, of episode one. And this episode is dedicated to telling the story from the woman's perspective. If you remember back to the story in episode one, that was basically the, the guy's perspective of, you know, the situation, how it unfolded and how it ended. But in this episode, we'll be talking about the woman's perspective and her motivations. I mentioned a few, few details in the episode one about the lady's side of the story. She, she was having a pretty rough time and she wanted to get away from her, her life. So she was kind of trapped in a, in a, in a life like slavery almost. You know, she was living with this Chinese family so that her husband and his mother and their young daughter. And the, you know, she often said that her mother-in-law hated her and she was just trying to get away from this life. So Chinese families in this part of the world, they've got a reputation for prejudice against new members of the family. You know, that, that happens from both sides. So the mother and the, the father sort of lorded over their new in-laws, you know, whether it's a new daughter-in-law or a son-in-law. And generally, they're never good enough to be a member of that family. My wife has a friend, a good friend, who, who she went to school with. And she was, you know, a Chinese family, and she married a, a Westerner, an English guy, and they escaped to live in England in the end because the, the Chinese family just would not accept this guy. But when they had children, then it all changed. Now they just sort of welcome them whenever they visit with open arms. And this this lady from episode one, you know, she was living in this this Chinese family, and the. It's, it's very normal that the mother-in-law or her mother-in-law doesn't like her because she thinks her son is, is better than, than, than her. You know, she's just not good enough, doesn't meet the standards of, of this, this family. But I think you know, that the same could be said for you know, families all around the world. You know, their new in-laws, sort of daughter-in-law or son-in-law. Unfortunately, the, the parents of, of the kids who get married, they have very high standards. You know, and very high expectations of their new in-laws. I, th I think we can all relate to that in some some way. So if we put ourselves in this lady's shoes, you know, she's living there in a small townhouse with her husband and his mother and their young daughter. So you know, any opinion she had or any matter she brought up, she was completely outgunned. You know, so her husband was obviously siding with his mother, and the mother obviously sides with her son. So this this lady, she was in, in a very difficult situation. You know, she was never listened to, and she was treated quite badly. I also mentioned in episode one that this lady, she came from the northeast region of Thailand, or Isan, as they call it over here. And that region has a tradition of being agricultural, and the, the people from that region, they're, they're often um, looked down upon by the rest of, of Thailand, you know, for being farmers and being poor. It, it traditionally was a, a poor region of, of the country, but it, it certainly isn't now. You know, they're, they're a very forward-moving region now. Yeah, that was probably another dimension to this lady's situation, you know, because she's from the northeast. And also living down in the south, you know, she's not even a southerner. So that, that's kind of probably adding her unfortunate situation. So again, from the woman's perspective, when this Westerner 
arrived and moved in opposite. And probably she thought, wow, this is my chance, you know, get, get away from this, this awful life I'm in. So she, you know, befriended him, tr you know, probably intentionally tried to, to start up a relationship with him. And of course, you know, being a, a gullible Westerner, you know, we're, we're very um, susceptible to the charms of, of these, especially the Northeastern ladies, you know, they're, they are, they're really renowned for, they, they, they use this term, Al Jai Ging. And that means they're very good at catching your heart. And they really are, you know, they're, they're really top class in, in that respect. Uh, that almost sounds as though I'm talking from experience, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. And the other aspect is that this Westerner, you know, he's looked upon as being rich, as all Westerners generally are, by the ties. You know, we, we might be very quick to dismiss that, thinking back to our own countries and, yeah, we've got lots of poor people over there and, you know, how can they dis discriminate between, you know, rich and poor like that so easily, just by, you know, seeing the colour of our skin or, you know, the fact that we're from the West. But when we consider a bit deeper, you know, so let, let's talk about something, you know, very ordinary, like a, like a, a dishwasher. In Western countries, that's a standard household appliance. In this country, it, it most certainly isn't very rare indeed to, have, to, to, to find a house with, with a dishwasher. You know, we're talking about a machine here, not a person, obviously. So in Thailand, it's, it's a luxury item, completely out of reach of most households here. And the, the tax they, they place on dishwashers as well, that, that sort of reflects the, the luxury item. So yeah, that, that kind of puts it into a bit more perspective, you know, because we, we think, yeah, well, we our countries, we have lots of poor, poor people as well, but they're not poor compared to the poor people here. You know, there's a, a huge difference. This view that, that the Thais have of Westerners being rich, it, it is founded, it's not something that we can dismiss. It, it, you, you kind of have to dig a bit deeper into the nation state, I'll, I'll call it, here. You know, where poor people, I mean, they, they really are poor. You know, minimum wage here is 300 baht a day. That, that's, and that would be seven pounds 43 pence a day. In US dollars, that is $9.92. So, I mean, that, that's not a lot. Yeah, that, that would be not even minimum wage per hour in, you know, in Western countries. So, yeah, this is per day. But that kind of puts it in a better perspective. I mean, probably people receiving benefits in Western countries earn a lot more than that. You know, and that earn, they don't earn it, they, they receive a lot more than that. So, yeah, we, we kind of have to keep these things in perspective as far as, you know, the, the way Thais look upon Westerners. So mindsets of people in cultures that vary greatly from our own, they're shaped by things like history, social norms, and, you know, there's a whole list of things that, that shape these mindsets. I've actually got a list of them right here, so I'll read these off to you. So, yeah, so history, we're talking about wars and colonialism and things like that. Hardship, tradition, education, governing systems, inward, outward perspective mindsets, nation state, and even climate. That, that even plays a, a, a part in, in mindsets of, of people from other cultures. So all of these things, they're completely unique to each country. And as Westerners, we kind of have a bit of a rep an unfortunate reputation as being ethnocentric. Now, ethnocentric, what that means is that we use our standards and use those to judge everybody else. And I think that British, they, they sort of used this everywhere they went in the world back in you know the colonial era and that that was pretty unfortunate you know but it, it kind of stuck so yeah the, so the British are, are very good at doing that unfortunately we, we just should not do that you know every country is unique and they're unique because of their circumstances so for us to judge everyone else and judge their culture it's, it's completely wrong and that, that's being ethnocentric, which is a, a pretty bad thing. So, as I'm British, you know, I can talk from my own 
uh, background, cultural background. And I can say with all honesty here that the British culture is the polar opposite of Thai culture. And I've got a, a, a slide here I'm just going to put up and show you. British culture, if you look at these, these um, dimensions, cultural dimensions, these are from the Hofstede Center on the internet. So you can, I'll put the link in, in here so as you can check that out yourselves. And I've done a comparison on their, their website between the UK, Thailand, and also we're, we're putting America in there, the US, just to give us a bit more perspective. And you can see that the dimensions, every single one, all six of them, on the opposite side of the 50% midway point. So if you look there at, at um, individualism versus collectivism, we really are polar opposites there. And also the US, you can see that as well. The US is actually more individualist than the UK by a couple of points. But Thailand is, is way down. It's like 20%. So, you know, that, that's, that's a huge difference. And, you know, the whole mindset of the people here is so completely different just based on that one dimension. So, you, you know, this is all referring back to the case of, of the woman from episode one and, you know, why she did what she did. And can we justify what she did? Well, we kind of can. You know, it, 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 she is justified in what she did from her own perspective from her cultural background. But as Westerners, you know, we, we're very quick to judge. But when we put it in her, her perspective and when we take our stance from her perspective, you know, we look at the whole situation from her perspective, she was in a very bad situation and she wanted out. And she was prepared to basically do anything to get out of this, this awful situation she was in. Is that justified? Well, I mean, we, we all have our own opinions on that, but, you know, coming from a, a Thai perspective, I, I think, you know, I'm not really qualified to, to, to say this from a Thai perspective, but I think I've been here long enough and interacted enough with, with Thai people to understand what makes them tick. And I would say she just wanted out. And so she was prepared to make sacrifices to get out of this, this situation she was in at home. And this is how it unfolded. For herself, you know, can she justify what she did? I'm sure she can. And was it a terrible thing she did? Well, it was a terrible situation she was in and she wanted to get out of that. But, but that's still out there. I mean, you know, the, the, the jury's still out on that one. Please add comments, you know, from your perspective as well try to bash this out amongst us you know and see what the majority decision is and we also need to bear in mind it's going to vary from cultural backgrounds you know it's easy for us to say you know using our own values to judge the whole situation but we also need to bear in mind there are other people with a whole different set of values that also have their opinion and it would be interesting to, to hear those as well. So we'll dig a bit deeper in individualism versus collectivism because that's one of the biggest differences between Western cultures and, and Thai culture for sure but Asian culture in general they're very collectivist. In fact the majority of the population of the world are collectivist. So all of China, India, Russia, you know, we're talking about really large countries here. Yeah, Russia as well, they, they are collectivist cultures. They're not individualist. So, you know, when we bear that in mind, we are a minority. You know, we are, we are individualist, but we are in the minority in as far as the population of the world is concerned. You know, I've been toying with this, this idea that perhaps individualism is a destination on the route to development. I'm really not sure that's true, but it's just an idea I, I've had in my mind for a while now that, you know, this is the inevitable outcome of development. You know, when societies develop and, you know, when, when we consider that pretty much every developed Western country is individualist, you know, that kind of points in that direction. There's a sort of, um, 
I can I can think of this word in Thai. I'm going to say laptop in Thai, but I can't think of this this word in English. I was going to say ammunition. It's not that um, evidence evidence to, to back up my my theory here on that that individualism is a destination of development. I mean individualism it, self. That's all about self. You know we we value ourselves we value our own opinions whereas collectivist cultures they value the opinion of the group it's not self it's the group the group comes first it's not me you know it's not my opinion it's not what I think it's what the group thinks that that's what comes first and it's all about getting on with others or living in harmony with others Whereas individualist cultures, we're, we're, we value individualism, you know, being an individual. We, we put a lot of um, value on that. And being responsible is also a, 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 a value that we hold quite highly. I mean, there's a whole number of these things that, that sort of define what an individualist is and what a collectivist person is. You know, even as far as professionalism, in individualist cultures, we, we value, we place value on, on being professional in whatever it is we do. So you'll get a person who sweeps the roads. They place value on their, their job. You know, this is their, their profession, if we call, can call it that. And they place value on that. You know, they're, they're happy to do this job and they get rewarded for it with, with a salary. Whereas in a collectivist culture, they do it for the money, and that's it. You know, certainly in, in Thailand, you know, I'm, I'm talking more of a, a perspective from Thailand here. I couldn't say the same for Japan, I have absolutely no idea. I think, you know, they have a, a, a more professionalist idea or outlook than, than a lot of other Asian cultures do. But, you know, we don't sort of devalue ourselves because of our profession. Whereas over here, that, that, you know, a street sweeper, they don't really hold a lot of street cred, really, in Thailand. They, they will be embarrassed to tell people that's, that that's what they do. Whereas in the West, yeah, I guess some people would be embarrassed, but generally, you know, they're... I mean, if, maybe in America they would use this term sanitation engineer and make it sound really extravagant and amazing and wow that's a that's a, a great profession so yeah we, you know we we do value what we do you know we we are more professional than people from collectivist cultures you know that here it's just doing it for your salary and that's pretty much as far as it goes the one thing is the same whether you're in the uk or in thailand you know we still have to live for the rest of our lives with the decisions we make and we have to carry that with us for the rest of our lives so this this woman from episode one you know it, it could be that she's not really doing so well in life even now you know that because she's she's done these things and she sort of feels that she hasn't made the right choices and that, that really torments ties, you know, they, they, they get very upset by things that they've done, you know, and this, this luggage that they're, they're carrying with them in life. And, you know, it's often the case where women will almost give up on life and, and just go into a, a temple and become a nun or, you know, just, just have a pretty rough life for the rest of their lives because of decisions they've made and you know, making bad calls, I guess we could call it, in, in their lives. And, well, it's raining nice and hard now. There's one more point I, I wanted to bring up, and that's, you know, equal rights in Thailand for women and men. They're not equal at all, and they're a long way from being equal. And women, they, I mean, this is a real core belief and, and value in, in Thailand, and it's it's something that, that came to my attention quite a long time ago, that women consider themselves as being um, inferior to men 
and men consider themselves as being superior to women. And that's something that, that's so ingrained in this country. I mean, a lot of people are going to disagree with what I'm saying, even Thais, they're going to disagree. But if you get under the surface, you'll see it. You, you really do see that in Thailand. And a friend of mine, he he's, he was talking about uh, relationships between men and women. And he just came out with this, and this sort of caught me off guard a bit. He said, men are hunters, women are prey. And that, that really kind of caught me off guard. You know, I was, I was really blown away by that statement. And he's, he's a Thai, one of my good friends. And yeah, I mean, that, what a thing to say, wow. Yeah, I was, I was really shocked by that statement, but it just came out, you know, as though it was, it was yeah, that's what everybody believes. So yeah, that, that was a bit of a, a bit of a, a shock. I also wanted to mention that, that trust is not something that's, that's valued as much as it is in a, in a individualist culture. You know, trust is kind of the be all and end all for any relationship in, in an individualist culture. If you can't trust the person you're entering a relationship with, then there's really no foundation for this relationship whatsoever. But in, in this part of the world, and certainly in this country, it, it, it really isn't something that's as important as it is in, in Western cultures. The, the number one value they have here is getting along with other people and being part of the group. Not trust. Trust takes, you know, it's, it's, it's further down the list. It, it's, it's there, but it's really not a high, highly valued cultural aspect. This relates back to this, this lady, you know, she wasn't out to get trust or, or, or be believed. So when you enter a relationship with a person like that, it, it, obviously there's going to be a lot of things that can go wrong. And yeah, we, we saw in that example that they certainly did. So in summary, this lady, you know, she had a rough life that she wanted to escape. And this Westerner moving in opposite her house was her escape plan. So she befriended him, you know, saw him as being somebody with money and basically saw him as, an, as, as her kind of escape to get out of this this life she was she was stuck in and yeah she I mean to, to Westerners we would say you know, she sort of crossed the line of what what was right and what wasn't but in her mind she didn't you know she just wanted to get out did she consider everything as deeply as we would from a Western perspective probably not you know she just thought on the surface, you know, she didn't dig deep. She just thought, okay, this is my way to get out. And, you know, this guy is gonna provide the financial uh, stability I need to, to, to get out of this situation I'm in. And, you know, she, she made a sacrifice as well. I mean, her daughter actually moved out with her and followed her up to the Northeast when she eventually moved up there with this, this Westerner. So the daughter was still with her, but that, that was a sacrifice in itself, you know, splitting the daughter from her, her father and her, her grandmother, who she had lived with up until this time. So there was a sacrifice, and this, this woman, she just needed to escape from this slave life she was living. Here, yeah, the jury's still out on this, so yeah, just, just share your opinions. So that's it for today's episode hope you enjoyed that and if you have any comments please leave them in the comment section below thanks very much for watching bye